What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of What's Your Favorite Scary Movie, where I talk to people and ask them what their favorite scary movie is. And today I have a guest that I'm very excited to have. It's King Corbin slash Tom from the WWE. Hey man. What's going on, dude? Hey, I'm so happy to have you here. I'm a huge fan. I know it all started with what a meet and greet and you guys told me about your podcast and I was like, oh yeah, we got to do this. So it, you know, we're quarantined. So we're making it, making it work. At the meet and greet, when Chelsea and I met you, we mentioned that we had heard that you're a horror movie fan, right? Yes. Yes. I mean, I might even work on camera, but my, my legs got horror tattoos all over it. <laughs> yes. You know? <laughs> the tattoo that I've heard of, I don't know if it's your most infamous one, but it's the one that I think is amazing. You have a minion with a Jason mask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the Despicable movies to me, for some reason, are hilarious. And I yeah. think the minions are hilarious. My birthday was on a Friday the 13th. And I was like, I want to get tattooed, but I want a funny one. So I did the minion with the Jason mask on Friday the 13th on my birthday. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty fantastic i haven't even seen most of those movies but i just think they're hilarious with their little yellow butts <laughs> but yeah right. <laughs> right so today we're going to talk about your favorite horror movie which isn't a friday the 13th despite the tattoo and the shirt for your favorite horror movie you picked alfred hitchcock's the birds i did dude this first of all this was really hard to say hey pick one movie it is hard even in the email you were like you know you can like it for the soundtrack or all of the you gave me all these different options and i had like an hour and a half drive home from orlando after i read the email so i was like the whole way home i'm going through it and going okay what movie what movie what movie and you said soundtrack so i mean i think like devil's rejects it's one of my favorite soundtracks to a movie of all time especially the ending scene with you know the gunfight then you know i'm going okay do i want to go like a paranormal movie do i want to go exorcist i even love the original paranormal activity it's terrifying or do i want to go with Candyman? because i have three Candyman tattoos <laughs> my victim and i go man what movie spawned it all for me and that's the birds the birds was my first introduction into that like thriller horror and can you even classify the birds as a horror i do people say the same about jaws like is that a horror is it a thriller whatever it is but i, I think that you know the effect the movie had classifies it as a horror and that's kind of what got me and i think I, my first movie was the birds then i went to like nightmare on elm street so it was a nice. quick transition into the you know all kinds of stuff you are all my children now it's even funny too like i have two birds downstairs they're cockatiels and i made a whole like horror video with me and the dog xander xander we gotta run we gotta run and the cockatiels are flying around the house one of the cockatiels is sitting on like a human skull what are your cockatiels names uh miko and koki when i covered the birds i borrowed my friend's cockatiels for the background of the video did they go crazy <laughs> yeah they kept squawking during my line readings and i was like <laughs> yeah fuck up i'm trying to make a video yeah. i'm james a Janice, and So do you remember your first time watching the movie? Were you really young? Dude, I was probably, I would say like eight, eight or nine, somewhere way back, because my dad liked a lot of Hitchcock stuff. So that's kind of how we got into that world. But yeah, watching it as a kid, like I said, that's what kind of just spawned me down that path. Yeah, what were your, the most memorable scenes to you as a kid, like before you rewatched it? And it's funny, cause you kind of remember things a little different, but the guy losing his eyeballs, like when she goes in to get the chicken feed, when he has no eyeballs and he's laid out there and it's the blood all over him. As a kid, that terrified me. And then like, it kind of spawned into, like I was telling somebody, I was like, yeah, the birds flew off with his eye, which didn't happen. <laughs> when you're a kid, you kind of like start adding things to the scene to make it a little scarier because your mind starts playing tricks. And that was kind of like probably the first time I'd really seen gore. That was a fairly gory scene for this movie. You know, there's a lot of little like blood on the arm, the necks or the cheeks, but like this dude's missing his eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that always stuck out to me because I also watched it as a kid. Like my parents felt it was fine to watch the birds growing up. So yeah, yeah why not? It's a good entry level horror 
horror movie. You know? It is. Technically, I think it's PG thirteen too, right? It might even. I think it's PG. It was probably before the PG thirteen rating. What makes it your favorite horror movie? Because it could just be the nostalgia and the way that it got you into other horror movies. But are there other things that really stand out to you? Yeah, there's a lot of things that I think that really stand out about this movie, especially when I got a little older and could appreciate the little details. I think for me, I'm a very simple person. We see me in the wrestling ring, like I'm not overly complicated in my offense. Like I keep it very simple for people to understand. And I think that's what this movie did as well that I'm such a fan of is it was so simple. Like they're taking this everyday thing and they're making it deadly. The birds don't have four legs and they're eight wings or there's like not like a big boss super bird. And I appreciate simplicity when you can do it and still make it suspenseful. Even the simple things like when they're walking through like the flocks at the end or in the middle because it's like the birds are coming and going in their attack mode. The anticipation of just seeing these birds walking around their feet like are they going to attack? Are they going to attack? And then they don't. Like it, it was kind of a cool way to do it because he built anticipation and then didn't give you a payoff every time. So even the ending is so simple just when they get in the car and kind of drive off it's just like over like you're going whoa okay that was awesome so many things especially nowadays are just over complicated overdone and overproduced and i think they base everything on these jump scares in this movie i don't even think there was a jump scare in the whole movie everything is a slow build even when we're talking about the guy with no eyes lydia the mom is walking in and she sees like the damaged cups and you're going okay now this is gonna something's going on then she goes in the room and sees the window and then another bird on the bed and then it's like a slow pan of the feet where nowadays it would be like she walks in the room and ah, a guy with no eyes i just like the way that he did everything kind of as a slow build even when the birds are attacking the house and they're trying to peck through the door like tiny little holes i think nowadays the door would just come blown off and birds would be flying through you know what i'm saying and then you know i appreciate the characters in every scene from the overprotective mother the weird creepy ex-girlfriend who moved to the little town where you know <laughs> this guy doesn't even kind of live there he works in the city five days a week but she moved there to be close to him but it's over and she's given melanie the dirty looks and then even in the diner you know after the school kids got attacked you had you know the crazy old man at the bar going the world's gonna end it's the end of the world and then one lady that's got way too much knowledge to just be in a little diner right in that small town yeah she's like there's this many billion species around the world if you all the guns don't matter which is kind of cool because there she's basically telling you, hey, if these birds attack, we're all really screwed. <laughs> you know, when they come back in after the explosions, which is hilarious when the guy's pumping gas and gets hit in the side of the head by a bird and he's like knocked out. Yeah, that fucking <laughs> floors that guy, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, he hits the gas pump and they all run over and check on him, but they're just letting the gas pour down the road. No one's like, hey, I'm going to shut this off. Watch out! <laughs> She goes back in, that lady's like, it's all your fault, and she slaps her. There's little details that are really sophisticated from the personalities, but then the simplicity of the story and the antagonist just being your everyday birds. Uh, no soundtrack, I mean. No soundtrack, man, it's, it's bizarre. It's wild, and there's, I don't think a movie could do that these days. No, I think it was a brilliant move because it just amplifies any sound of birds. Yes. And it makes them so scary. I was like, I'm gonna really do this when I put it on. I've got a little theater in my house that's got like a screen and seven seats and I cranked it up and like you're sitting there and you're hearing like birds scratch behind you on the surround sound. Oh, if you have man. a if you had a soundtrack, I think you'd lose that. The sound I think even amplifies that uh that kill that stuck with us our whole lives because it just pushes in on the guy without eyes with no sound yeah. or sound effects or like violins yes. or anything. I often wonder what this movie is like for younger people today who maybe didn't grow up with it if they watch it and they think it's boring because yeah, it is slow. There are is. long stretches of silence, like no dialogue. It's ridiculous. But for me, yeah, that just builds the suspense. Yeah, that's an interesting thought because, yeah, they do it in a way that I think if you don't appreciate horror, you would be like, that's eh, kind of boring. And the funny things you pick up when you don't have a soundtrack, like when she's driving down to the coast, it sounds like her car's doing 110 because like every <laughs> yeah. time she's turning, you're hearing like the tires screech and you're like how fast is she going through this mountains 
I mean, even those birds are leaning into it, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the birds in the cage are at an angle when they're taking the turns. It's so fantastic. You mentioned the characters, which I, I love them so much because they're so filled in and real. And like you said, the possessive mother who's afraid of losing her son after their fathers died. Yeah. And Melanie, who's just this like kind of whimsical. I mean, she fucking drives 80 miles up the coast yeah. just as like a prank. <laughs> as a joke. I'm going to play a joke on you and buy you the birds you wanted. Come yeah. on. <laughs> oh, thanks. You got me. <laughs> yeah. And then she just snuck into the house to take him in. I find it so amazing that she did like the first 80% of the movie not ever taking her fur coat off. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Like she's like, yeah, I'm going to rent a boat and drive across this thing in a fur coat and heels and uh, put these <laughs> birds inside his house and then sneak off. And she's like, you're the only boat in the little lake and you're like trying to hide behind the motor. And she's like, oh, he saw me. And then she sees him driving around. I love when she gets tagged in the head with a bird out of nowhere. She's like, oh, look, he, what? Oh, and he even like, oh no, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, man. I love how poised she's getting herself for this confrontation. Yes. She's like readying herself and then just bam, bird in the face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you have a specifically favorite scene or shot? I know that this movie's full of really memorable, great ones. I like the subtle looks that the ex-girlfriend keeps giving Melanie. It's almost like evil when she's like, you know, I'm only going to be here every day, but she's like getting ready to drive off from her house from the first one. And she's kind of like giving her that look out of the side of her eye. And then when she starts asking her questions, there's like dirty little looks in between the questions. And she's like, well, I'll give you some brandy. And I'm like, well, she's not going to drink. And then she starts telling about how she used to be with him. She's like, well, now I need some brandy. Like, I'm in a business of you sell emotion and those kind of things that people buy into is the expressions on your face and I thought the teacher hers were the best mm -hmm. just something about her looks out of the corner of her eye like you felt she's like who is this shitty lady here trying to take my ex you know like you feel that from her yes I know did something unexpected come up? I, I loved all the scenes, and then she gets iced at the end. I mean, she's just there with a foot up in the air and <laughs> laying on the pavement. She was somebody like I drew that emotion from. So I think for me, those were kind of some of my favorites that weren't like the action of the birds attacking and stuff like that. Just the subtlety of that, I appreciated. Yeah, all those dialogue scenes are just so well acted. To me, it always seems almost like a stage play. Like you mentioned, the diner scene. That whole conversation with that like ensemble cast of random characters that could easily be something that you see on stage 100 percent. the diversity that each character had it wasn't it wasn't muddled with too many people and each one was very distinctly different because if you think about like the diner scene like we talked about you got the bartender who's like inquisitive he's asking the questions the mother protecting your two children the crazy homeless looking guy in the corner and then the lady with too much knowledge i don't know i appreciate the stuff that's like behind the scenes of the movie a little bit like hitchcock was kind of creepy there's a whole bunch of stuff with him like trying to make moves on the main character and she doesn't take it so then she's injured in the phone booth scene and injured at the end of the movie and she's blaming him saying it was on purpose so like those little things too just the characters that are real life characters that were a part of the movie at the end when he's carrying her down the stairs that's not her that's not no. Kitty Hedren yeah and you can tell that she's like keeping her face yeah. hidden away from yeah. the camera because she was like in the hospital. <laughs> read something one time, it's like a seven day recovery from the emotional distress of that scene because they had to do it so many times with real birds and it was supposed to be- Real birds, dude, man. they had some guy there that was training birds for them. How do you train the sparrows that came down the chimney? Which I love the scene with that because these birds are flying in the chimney and he takes a round table and puts it in front of a square fireplace. I'm going, <laughs> that's not gonna work, man. Yeah, there's like a big gap on the side and he starts to <laughs> kind of cover it with Hello? a pillow yeah. <laughs> and I just like fuck it <laughs> so I like I love that scene too because it is like I think with horror movies now it's hard to find characters that kind of are real I watched one the other day ready or not and I thought they did a fantastic job of pinning her in the middle of what it would kind of really be like for a real character where she's not too smart and kicks everybody's ass and she's also not really stupid <laughs> this movie every character nobody was like over the top aside from the one lady that knows the crazy amount of knowledge i have never known birds of different species to flock together the very concept is unimaginable why if that happened 
we wouldn't have a chance. Yeah, it's hard to find that middle ground. And I think, you know, they did a great job of giving every character like that real life thing. Man, how crazy did Lydia go when she starts yelling, you know, at her son? Like, I wish your father was here. But like the sister's like trying to step in between him. And then she's like, I'm sorry, I was losing my mind there. The father aspect is something I never picked up on as a kid. And it wasn't until I rewatched it last night that I noticed there's like a portrait of him in their house. So yes. he's literally like looming over them the entire yes. movie. And then I found a weird connection too, because there's that weird, my mother left and she's like awkwardly cries on top of the hill when she's like, my mother don't waste your time. She ditched us when I was 11 and ran off with some hotel man in the east. At the end of the movie, like when they're driving off, she like looks up and is like, there's kind of like a mother-daughter moment there. Maybe she's seeking the motherly figure in her life. Actually, yeah, because she even has the line, maybe someone should tell Lydia that she'd be gaining a daughter. Yes. And so, yeah, it yeah. makes sense. I didn't even think yeah. about that, that she's like gaining a mom too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how do you match those two characters any better? She's got no mom. He's got no dad. She's kind of a troublemaker. He's kind of a straight-laced lawyer. It, it's a weird, perfect circle that he kind of builds there. It's kind of funny. So to me, they're all very real life characters. Yeah, and that makes the danger feel that much more real. I love too the school scene where she's lighting her cigarette outside and like one's there and then there's four there and then there's like 10 and then there's like 40. I love how the birds, I feel like they're literally just plotting all the attacks. That is my favorite scene from the movie because you just see them slowly build and then there's that tracking shot of the one bird flying and it lands <laughs> and it's just birds everywhere. Yeah, I love too. Nowadays, you have drones and stuff to fly up there, but like the essential drone angle where they're like the fire's burning in the middle oh, of the yeah. town, but it's like up above the birds and the birds are like all gathering and then they start dive bomb. Like, I was like, yes, this is awesome. Yeah, that shot is incredible. I love that. There's thing. just so many, and like that's what, 1963? It's insane the stuff they did for 63 because I was like reading they couldn't use a green screen because the birds flapping would make it all fuzzy because they were using real birds and mechanical birds. Like, it's wild. I can't, I just still don't understand how they do trained those birds. My birds don't listen to anything. <laughs> it's funny when like we have guests over and they get out of the cage, we let them out of the cage and they start doing loops and they just land on people's head and they're like, <laughs> what do I do? Do, do I shoo it? I and they just, they're frozen. And so even the dog too, they'll land on the dog and he's just like, oh no, oh no. At least the dog doesn't eat him though. No, he loves him. They sing to him. So at this point, I'm gonna ask you if you have some trivia questions for me regarding the birds. I do, I do have some. I actually wrote down like four. Okay. I'm gonna, I've got three of them. So I ended up taking a quiz I found online, like how well do you know the birds? And I got like an 84%, it was like 25 questions, but I took this one from there, which I got wrong. Alfred Hitchcock appears in the movie. Mm -hmm. What is he doing when he appears in the movie? That mofo is walking two dogs out the pet store. See, I didn't, I didn't even see it. Yeah, it's fast. It's real fast. I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Next question is, what time do the Brenners usually eat dinner? Oh, shit. That is specific. I didn't catch the line, so I'm just going to have to guess. Six o'clock? Wrong, dude. Seven. Seven? That's a late dinner. Seven o'clock, the same as usual. I'm married to a Spanish woman. We eat dinner at like nine. My last question for you is why did the man Mitch was defending shoot his wife in the head six times? Oh God. Yeah. Six times. Even two would be overdoing it. Can you imagine it? I mean, even twice would be overdoing it. He was watching, I forget what sport, maybe football game and she changed the channel. Yeah. 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 That was it. <laughs> and then <laughs> they all like, laugh about it. They're all like, ha, ha, ha. yeah, I know. They were like, yeah, it shot him in the head six times. His wife changed the channel. And even Melanie's like, ha, 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 playing the piano. I got Got two out of three of them correct. You did. You did good. But you think, like, it's crazy. They made a movie about birds killing people. It genuinely instilled fear in people. And I don't think many movies actually do that anymore. Yeah, and I think that all goes back to what you said at the beginning of how it's just regular everyday birds. It's not mutants or anything. It's just what we see every day in the air. Yes. Again, another reason why it's one of my favorites, because it lives forever kind of in your brain. Well, Tom... Corbin, whatever you want to go by, man, thank you so much for joining me. Heck yeah, man. I appreciate it. It's a good way to 
escape the uh, lockdown that we're in here, and uh, let's do it again. Yeah, absolutely. When things get back to normal, we'd love to have you over for the podcast and talk to you more. Heck yeah. We're out there in Cali all the time. We'll make it happen. Hell yeah, man. Thanks so much. And we'll have more episodes of these uh, What's Your Favorite Scary Movie? Because there's stuff that I can record from inside my apartment. So stay tuned for those. Thanks, everyone. Be good people.